Welcome to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. Are you ready for an old-fashioned jamboree? Heck yeah! Mark your calendars for September 16th, right here at the RV Park at North Star Mohican Casino and Resort. It's gonna be a good time. Oh, it is. Great bluegrass brand, hand-picked. And reserve your RV site right now or hotel room at the all-new resort at North Star Mohican Casino Resort in Bowler, Wisconsin. Hey, we're gonna have lots of grilling fun in the next half hour, some food fun, and a whole bunch of shenanigans. I was just looking at our all-new Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling Cookbook, and we're gonna start out on page 127. Oh. Mark your books to page 127, sweet potato pie. It's gonna be a good time. It is gonna be good. We'll be right back. View past episodes of our show by going to maddogandmerrill.com and click on Midwest Grilling. Well, welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. We are going to have a wonderful time here uh, in the next few minutes. we got a lot of great grilling. Don't forget, we're at the RV campground for North Star Mohican Casino and Resort. And uh, Merrill's going to show us how to do some wonderful corned beef and cabbage. Yeah, corned beef and cabbage, something very, very simple to do. We get, go ahead and get a nice head of cabbage. It's all about cabbage it's today. It's all about cabbage. Bring it in the green. The, Bring it in the green, the at next, least for the, this The part. next segment's going to be all about sauerkraut, uh, and this is what we need to make sauerkraut is good old heads of cabbage. That's right. And a lot of people don't think about doing cabbage on the grill, and nope. there's different ways that you could do it. If you want, you could even take this head of cabbage here and go ahead and quarter it and put a stick of butter in there and some corned beef. I've got one on the grill already, but this one we're gonna do a little bit differently here. Mad Dog's shredding up some cabbage for us. That's because it's a top secret recipe. We need Very to shred top, it. Top, Now, you know, <laughs> we've got nothing but the finest corned beef. We've just got dried corned beef here that you actually get in the package at the store. And uh, you can buy these right by uh, where you always get your, you know, your bologna, your salami and things. And if you like, you can shred this up how am I doing? Laser, you're doing good, all right? You shred that up, put it on top. Mm. Comes out really good. Now, I'm going to actually leave this on the grill for about, that's tough, tough uh, corned beef, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what. On there, that's good. Now, if you like, you can I'm, use... I'm earning my cabbage. You are earning your cabbage. Burning. Now, you can use butter if you like, but it's a little warm today, all okay. right? So I'm going to use a little bit of Fat Louis olive oil. Sounds good. And drizzle that on the top. Now, if you like, you could go ahead and cover this with aluminum foil. Place it on the grill for approximately, I like going about 45 minutes or so. And it'll come out really nice. So indirect method of cooking though? Indirect method of cooking is the best way to okay. do that. Now I've got one over here where I've used the whole head of cabbage. Sure. Just to give you an idea how that looks like. But look at this, it's really very good. Cabbage comes out really nice and tender if you like. Wow, look at you that. You got that the corned beef delicious. in there. That's hot. Nice, look hot, at that. that hot. Good stuff, good Boy, eating. I love cabbage on the grill, let me it tell you is. that. A lot of people don't try this, but something very easy to do at home. So what do you got grilling there, Mad Dog? Page 127 of Mad Dog and Marrow's Midwest Grilling Cookbook, you'll find sweet potato pie. Sweet potato pie, this is a good one. You're actually gonna go uh, do three ways to do sweet potatoes on the grill, if you would, please. Okay. What you wanna do is grab some big old fashioned yams. Now I've got a good sharp knife and a good steady hand. I've done this several times, and I'll actually cut mine into paddles lengthwise about a half inch thick, but if you find some nice chunky ones, turn sideways, Merrill. This way? If you turn side, if you get some nice chunky ones like Merrill, then you take your knife and you just kind of oh. cut like that into pie sections. Oh so boy. just one slice of pie, I'll show you how to do this All real right. quick. So you can put those into little circles and That'll make pies, right. but I'll, do, I'll tell you what I did. What did you do? I took my sweet potato and I cut it into paddles lengthwise and glistened mm. it heavily with an oil, and we put those paddles directly on the grates of the grill uh, just like a hamburger or a steak. And then we have some beautiful toppings to put on top of those. So here's our, pota our sweet potato. Remember, sweet potatoes are high in sugar content. Correct. So they cook a little bit faster. Uh, but there's a nice sweet potato, and that's piping hot, and it's nice and tender. We've got some apricot or peach preserves. Oh, good. Wasn't your brother in the preserves? He was in the preserves, my brother was. Constantly always in the preserves. Yes, he certainly was. Little apricot preserves. I'm going to add a little Ooh. bit of coconut on top of this one right here. We're going to add some almonds or pecans. Pecans. Over the top. I'm going to drizzle it with a little bit of honey. Got to wait for the honey this to get to the top. This is really good eating. And then we're going to add a little bit of cinnamon nutmeg, and this actually be pie, um, apple pie seasoning. Good. Now let me take a couple of those off. Let me scoop a couple of those off. Wait, where do I got them? Right back here. Excuse my back, folks, oh, just for okay. one second. Oh, well, they got your back. Ooh, boy. boy. It's hot, uh, isn't it? Yeah, uh, isn't ah, that delicious ah. looking? That's the, that's the uh, uh, sweet potato pie mm. on the grill. Now, with all good recipes, once in a while you make a mistake. 
Right. Meryl and I were doing a, a grilling show <laughs> up on stage, yes. and, and we were doing fluffer nutters, and all I had left was some peanut butter instead of the preserves, and I thought, well, what the heck, I'll make a dessert with that. But what it turned out to be is I'll put a scoop of peanut butter over the top of the sweet potato pie that's been warmed. I'll add the coconut. I'll add the almonds or pecans over the top of that. I'll drizzle it with honey. Uh, today I tried something a little bit different. That's grillology. I tried a little bit of curry over the top of it. Oh, really? Just to see what happens. But if you ever eat at an uh, Indian restaurant with the curries and, and the coconut milk and, mm -hmm. the, and, and the peanut sauces, that's exactly what you end up with is the wonderful peanut sauces. Peanut butter, all those great toppings mm. like the coconut and stuff, it's got to be delicious. Oh, man, but it, it turns good. into a side dish now. So the next time you do curry chicken or you do something with coconut milk for the meat products, that's what you want to do is put the peanut butter over the top, and it's a wonderful little side dish. Here's my last third way to do sweet potatoes right. on the grill. I'm going to have Meryl hold my bowl, and we're going to add, we took sweet potatoes and we cut them into wedges. I glistened them with an oil, a nice medium-low heat, and we put those on the grill for about 7, 8, 10, 12, 15 minutes, turning them around several times. Meryl's going to take that. I'm going to take some real old-fashioned maple syrup. Oh, and we're going to drizzle that over the top. That's the sweet. Now we're going to put a little bit of lime over the top oh. of that. Oh. And just one good quick swirl. <laughs> you thought it was going to hit you, didn't you? You <laughs> dang <totally. laughs> yeah, Let's just show those. Uh, let's right, just show okay. the, uh, the sweet potatoes. Yeah, isn't that delicious with the maple mm. syrup, the lime over the top? You can season them a tad oh. bit if you want to, but they really are delicious. So that's three ways to do sweet potatoes on the grill. Sweet potato pie, a side dish with peanut butter, or the, the maple syrup mm. covered. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to devour into that. You know, speaking of potatoes, I'm, I'm just right doing now. some red potatoes right now, which are very easy to do on mm. the grill. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of different ways that you can do potatoes. I can't resist either. I'm going to have to go in there, too. I'm sorry. Oh, oh man. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. With that lime with the maple oh, syrup. Oh, that's fantastic, folks. We never did it before. <laughs> oh, I know, but it's good. All right. Red skinned potatoes here, very easy. I just went ahead and cut these in half and then marinated with a little bit of olive oil, placed them on the grill, grill them on mm -hmm. all sides. They take about 15, 20 minutes. They come out absolutely excellent. It's just a good filler all the time with potatoes. The reason I like salad potatoes because you can leave the skin on them. Mm hmm. That's mm. the best thing about it. Wash them up, put the salad, uh, salad potatoes on the grill, and they come out delicious. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, about? we're going to be right back. We're going to do some great sauerkraut for you folks and under, other wonderful recipes. This well, is fantastic. Well, we would devour this whole platter of sweet potato wedges. Mm. <laughs> Where's mine right down there? Very, very, very we'll good. We'll be right back. If you have a comment or suggestion about today's show, contact us at maddogandmerrill.com. And don't forget to friend us on Facebook. Hey, Meryl, would you like some Egyptian grilled brisket? What's Egyptian grilled brisket, man, dog? It's the kind mummy used to grill. <laughs> <laughs> Hey folks, welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. I'll tell you what, hey, you can join us. You know, we're, we do a lot of traveling. Yes, we do. We go to a lot of different events, a lot of personal appearances. You can go to maddogandmerrill.com, click on Facebook, become a friend of Mad Dog and Merrill on Facebook, and, and there's a listing of the, of the appearances week by week where we're going to be. Uh, and and it's, a, it's a hoot of a time to be with us, and we appreciate sharing your recipes. So come along yeah, with us. Yeah, yeah. We're all over the place. We're, so join you, us. Join us on Facebook. Boy, that's a but, big head there, bud. What I'll you got? tell you what. We, uh, we had a chance last year, if you yes, remember, we did. Uh, to visit the fields uh, in, in Midwest Wisconsin uh, where a lot of cabbage is made. Probably 95% of all the cabbage in the United States, uh, the, 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 the sauerkraut is made in the Midwest, right up in our little neck of the woods uh, up at Bear Creek, Wisconsin. Yes, the big city. And, and we saw how cabbage was harvested, how it was brought to the fields, from the fields, uh, 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 and hand cored and cleaned and then shredded. They put them in these large vats. To that was really something to see. It, it really it, was. It really is amazing, yeah. the process that goes in from, from cabbage uh, uh, and then they put it into to large vats to, per, to ferment to perfection. And we have some beautiful crisp kraut. And I like using crisp kraut because you get it from the meat case. It, it, it's, it's crispier. It is. Very good And it's good fresher. Flavor. Nothing wrong with the jarred stuff, yep. but in a lot of cases, I like using the crisp kraut. Uh, so we got a couple of different recipes that we're going to show. This is my cabbage holder. Uh -huh. Oh, that's great. <laughs> what? So, so was, Big bowl of soup. Play a little cross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, and by the way, all you find folks in La Crosse and Eau Claire and Hudson, Wisconsin, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 
Madison, all over Wisconsin, all of Minnesota. We do appreciate uh, the fact that you folks are with us today. Oh, uh, there's, everybody. There's Bill over there. there in Bowler. Hello, Bill. Yeah, there's, yep. there's a Rod the over Rod, there in De Pere. De Pere. We appreciate De Pere. that. There's Tom yep. in New London. Yep. We're going to take some beautiful potatoes today, and it's all oh, about yes. this is all about crisp kraut and doing great recipes. And real quick here, here's a great recipe. You take okay. a potato, you cut it into slices. Meryl's going to whoop, tip your bottle. It's done that before, folks. Uh, all you do is you cut your potatoes just like we did our sweet potatoes. I'm going to do these with potato paddles. I'm going to glisten them with an oil, season them up real good, glisten them with an oil. They go directly on the grates of the grill for about four to five minutes on both sides. And I'll show you a perfect mm. example right here. Uh, that one's done to perfection right there. You can see it's toasty brown. Now the star of the show is the crisp kraut. So we're gonna put that on first, right on top, of, right on top of the spud. On the other ones, I put some barbecue sauce on, but my hands got kraut on them. Boy, nice uh, so job. we're gonna top that with some sauerkraut right there. I diced up some browned up bratwurst. Uh, so we're gonna make like a uh, Midwest Rubens, if you will. So we're gonna put some beautiful uh, uh, That's a Midwestern dish, folks. I mean, it really <laughs> is. You know what I'm saying? That's what Midwest grilling's all about. Definitely Midwest. So we have the kraut. We've got the bratwurst. I got a little mixture of uh, sweet pepper, red, green, and some beautiful white onions. A little bit of grated cheese over the top of those. And you put the hood down to let that blend for a little bit. And let me scoop a couple of those off okay. in the foreground there. Uh, these are a meal in itself. The kraut, the crisp kraut is oh. the hero here. Uh, but all the other great toppings from the Midwest, Midwest Rubens on potato paddles, potato Reuben pizzas on the grill. They're, they can't beat them, folks. They're delicious. They can't. They are. They're very yep. good, very good Midwest. I mean, how many times do you see people cook with sauerkraut on television? Very few. Yep. Very few. Doing something a little bit different today, I'm doing what we call kraut burgers. Ooh. Very easy to do. I've taken a pound of hamburger, and I've already cooked the burger, if you could see. Here, cook it up nice and brown. You can place this in a pan. Obviously, that you can do this on the skillet, but hey, we're grillers, so I'm going to put this on the grill. Now, I've used about a pound of the crisp kraut. All I right. went ahead and drained the crisp kraut. I used about a pound of that, and the flavor is just really, as Mad Dog said, if you've never had crisp kraut before, Mm. I love it. It's okay. great. Okay. Very easy to make the, the kraut burgers. Take a can of tomatoes. One can of tomatoes. Right here I've got 28 ounces. I went ahead and drained them. Those are diced? Those are diced. They're already diced. Place those in there. Stir this around a little bit. And I'll tell you what, you haven't lived till you've had kraut burgers. You're really going to be surprised. That's it? No, oh, I'm not done yet, <laughs> sir. Now you can use pizza sauce. Uh, you could use spaghetti sauce. There again, I've got approximately 14 ounces of spaghetti sauce. Pour that in there. Yeah, those are gonna be good. It's sort of like a uh, sloppy joe. Yeah. Sloppy joe, sloppy joe. Um, thanks, Mad Dog, I'm gonna steal your onions. Sounds good. One small onion will do it. Now you can go ahead and adjust this if you'd like. A little bit more onions, a little bit more tomatoes. But you'll stir that around. Okay. I'll stir this up just a little bit here. Alrighty. And then you're gonna let this simmer for about an hour. Now, I know this looks disgusting right now, but let me you show have you one something. one done? I got one done. Let All me show right. you something here. I'll put this right on top of it. All right. Look at this. Let me get out of the way here. I'll tell you what, you put that on a bun. That looks delicious. And it's what they call a kraut burger, and it's absolutely fantastic. It really is. The flavoring is just unbelievable. Uh, it's all kraut, it's all burger. It's good for you. That's here, what it is. Come over here now. Come over here. Now we're gonna coming. do right, some right, uh, right. sauerkraut bombers. All right, go ahead. Now I thought a little bit, and we're actually filming this show the day after 4th of July. Today is the 5th of July we're filming, and I, gr I browned up a few extra bratwurst because I knew I was going to do this recipe the next day. You can do it the same day. I'm going to take the bratwurst that are browned up, and I split a little crevice in there, and we're going to take the star of the show one more time. Oh, yes. The crisp kraut, and those go inside that crevice, and those get all packed. Now this is a smaller mm -hmm. drip pan right here. I got a bigger one on the grill, but you folks would want to use an eight and a half by 11 inch aluminum drip pan. Pack them in there well. The toppings, the, the peppers, the peppers, the onions, those will all go on top of there. Uh, we've got the grated cheese over the top of that. Mm -hmm. And I put these on the grill, the indirect method of cooking. I seal them up. I put them on indirect method of cooking for about 30 minutes. And I want to show you a dish that can <laughs> be it. second to none. Look at that. Look at those, look at those beautiful Reuben bombers right there with that crisp kraut. Isn't oh, that delicious on the grill? Beautiful, sir. You take a bun and serve those up mm. individually. We're going to Midwest well. grilling. Yeah, Midwest absolutely. grilling. That's what it's all yep. about. You know, we're sort of pan handling today. A lot of times we do use a lot of aluminum pans. And here's another dish that I really love doing. I love kraut. To me, I'll tell you, there's nothing like country-styled spare ribs, Ooh. sauerkraut with some potatoes in there. Yep. 
very easy to do again. I used actually a whole bag of sauerkraut. Now these I went Two ahead. Two pounds. Yep. I went ahead and uh, went ahead and drained this. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and use some dark beer in there if you like. Uh, you could even use even just even water in there or a broth. But I've completely drained these because they'll still get moisture from the sauerkraut. And the ribs. That cooks for and a the while. ribs. So I've got some uh, red potatoes here that I've diced up. Yep. Like I said, two pounds of kraut. Let me grab my good old I'll give you a hand there. here. Now you basically just place these on top. It's uh, always teamwork, folks. It is team. You got to work as a team. You'll see it. Seal this up with aluminum foil, place it on the grill. I like going for really a nice hour. <laughs> there we go. A, nice, a good hour. Now, here we go. We got to do the finished product over okay, here. Okay, move to the side. Let me move show that, baby. Look at that, baby. Look, look at, at that, that look at baby. Them ribs. It is just, it's great. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> you got the spuds on there. You got the ribs. You got the kraut. It's good eating, folks. High in fiber, it's high in vitamin C, sauerkraut. It's great on the grill, and it's good for you, folks. Let me tell you that. We'll be right back with more of Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. Man. As soon as we devour this kraut. We're going to eat well today, buddy. Yes, sir. View past episodes of our show by going to maddogandmerrill.com and click on Midwest Grilling. Uh, welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. I bet you, I wish you were here. I wish you folks were here during the commercial breaks. Yes. We have a great time. Merrill and I are running around the trees, having a hoot of a time, <laughs> hiding behind the bushes. I like pickaboo, pickaboo. <laughs> there you are, there you are, hide and seek. Oh man, can we play hide and seek? <laughs> you know something, Merrill and I are all excited. We are we are at the RV park here at right. North, at North Star Mohican Casino and Resort, and and and, and they're going to have an old-fashioned jamboree. An old-fashioned jamboree, by guys. I'll tell you what, it's going to be a lot of fun. Our yes. good friends from hand-picked bluegrass band they are awesome it's gonna be a good time Joe Brian the whole gang they're gonna be here and they play some fantastic bluegrass I would reserve your RV sites right now here at the casinos RV park or rent a hotel room at their brand new resort it's phenomenal uh, very nice resort here at Bowler Wisconsin yes. for the Mohican North Star for the North Star Mohican Casino and Resort. Make sure you get here for that event. Oh, by the way, I'll tell you the date. September, what is it? September 16th. That's right. September 16th. And, and, and I got a little challenge. I got a challenge yeah. for you folks. And I'll take a wet willy from anybody. Okay. <laughs> you didn't let you me said. finish the challenge. Well, thanks. Oh, I, had to always, I don't know whether I like that or not. <laughs> well, gosh, you know what? I'll I got take me a some hand sanitizer. I'll I'm going to clean my up. Possibly take a wet willy from anybody. Here's the challenge. Okay. We have three barbecue sauces, uh, one spicy, one hickory, and one uh, number one sauce. If you don't, if you buy those sauces and you don't find them to be the most richest, wonderful sauces in the world, and if you love spicy, there's a habanero blend in there. True hickory extract comes from Manitowoc at the Red Arrow Company. They're all produced in Eau Claire, Wisconsin at the good folks at Silver Springs Horseradish and Mustard. I'll take a wet willy from anybody if you don't find those to be the best sauces. And they're available oh, yeah. now at the Woodman's and all our viewership area. Woodman's stores carry them also besides a lot of great grocers. If you can't find them in your area, ask for them. Uh, it's a good thing they went with the wet willy than the wedgie. <laughs> that would have been terrible. <laughs> you know why I couldn't get a wedgie today? <laughs> Jeez, why? You know, because I'm waiting for your, uh, uh, what are you making? I'm going to make sombreros. You know, we've talked about this before. Yep. Flour tortillas. I've actually got the wheat flour tortillas here I love here the today. wheat ones. They're very easy to make and something, especially if you're around the campfire, yep. RVing, or even at home, you want nice little hors d'oeuvres. These are very simple to do. And... <clears throat> Today, obviously, I'm just going to do one with, uh, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of uh, corned beef, and I'm going to put a little bit of Thousand Island dressing. Okay, what do you think that is? Take my plastic spoon. Oh, it was, a, it was a snake. Was it really? Yes, a python. Was it? Okay, really, okay. Now, if you'd like to, I didn't do this on this because we've done it earlier with the sauerkraut. You could place sauerkraut on here, but all what I'm going to do is place a little cheese. It's going to be a corned oh, beef sandwich. Oh, man, the kraut would be good on yeah, there, Yes, so it would be good on there. That's a lot of cheese. Oh, yeah, but, man, I love cheese, man. These well, that's going to bind that sandwich. Yeah, it together. is. You better believe it. I got one on the grill already. But you just fold it in half, if you like. I got one on the grill. I got a couple of just the cheese. Fold that in half. This oh, takes beautiful. about four to five minutes on each side. It's all what you have to do. Delicious. Put, looking, the, put the grill down. If you want, you could do open-faced pizzas with these. If you like, you could even take the spicy barbecue sauce. Oh, smile, Meryl. Turn it around. There you go. Put a big old smile on that face. Hey, hey speak of they... smiles. Speak of smiles. Uh, they're, they're... Well, let me show you one more thing you could do. Got nothing for Halloween? <laughs> How's that? Huh? Boo. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. 
Uh, there's a great walk and it's, uh, to benefit Habitat for Humanity. In fact, last year they raised $7,500, and you can help out this year. The event is September 10th at 8 a.m., and you all meet at the Manitowoc Piggly Wiggly, Manitowoc Piggly Wiggly, and it's called the, the, the Pig Walk and it goes from Manitowoc to Two Rivers Piggly Wiggly. So at, uh, uh, on September 10th at 8 a.m., you meet at the Manitowoc Piggly Wiggly, and you walk to Two Rivers, and you can help raise money, donations for Habitat for Humanity. And in your local community, if you can donate locally to your community's Habitat for Humanity, they build great homes for folks that are needy. And Marilyn and I helped out with a lot of cookouts. Yeah. They wouldn't allow us hammers and saws no, and no, stuff. No, bad. But they let they us give us get a spatula and a tongs. Look at that. It's neat. It's a really great, great organization. They really do good for all the communities, and, that's for sure. And don't forget, we do a lot of touring around. You can join us on Facebook by logging on to maddogandmerrill.com. Here's one more little idea, and I'm not going to open these up today, but here's, show the, how we cheat? here's the cat's meow right here. Yes. You take, uh, uh, these are whole beets, small ones, about 100 to a count or 120. These are little spuds, little potatoes, about 90 to 100. You open the can up. You dump out the juices on the inside. You add either Italian dressing or some nice oils like Fat Louis oils and some of our wonderful Grandma Hazel seasonings. And you just you, you put them right on top of the grates of the grill. You sear them up a little bit. You scoop them off, serve them to your guests, and they'll swear that you peeled every potato or every oh, beet that's out they there. They will. They will. I used to call them duck eggs. Remember that at we, the Milwaukee Sentinel Sports Show? You, we used to put these <laughs> on the grill, the potatoes, and when everybody walked by, we'd say, hey, and the duck eggs we have on, and they'd all uh, Do you know how many hunters asked us, how do you really prepare them duck eggs? Yeah, it's exactly. sort of scary. The beets are amazing, too. I've got to admit, when Mad Dog first did this, we did a catering job, you did those beets, I thought he had lost. It. Buttery really rich. People, yep. people crave them. They want them the next time we do their catering for them. So you can go on Mad Dog and and learn more about that too. We'll be right back to wrap this baby up right you now, folks. You got it. Folks. You got it. All right, I'm gonna make some more tortillas. All right, I'm gonna There's wrap some her up. Girls. All right, you got it. Buddy. I'm gonna roll this baby's. This baby's almost in the can. It is. It is. I can't almost wait. Almost in the can. If you have a comment or suggestion about today's show, contact us at maddogandmerrill.com and don't forget to friend us on Facebook. Well, I'll tell you what, Mad Dog and Merrill here, Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. Uh, don't forget, each and every Sunday at 9.30, you can tune into this great show, whether you're in the fine state of Minnesota or Wisconsin. Every yes. Sunday morning on your local CW network, you can find Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. Merrill, your little flour tortilla shells oh, they're good. turned out wonderful on I the know. grill, as they do each and they every time. They were so hard to do. I was up all night thinking, how am I going to do this? I know. We call these the eighth wonder of the world, and they are delicious. I'm going to devour that in a minute or two. Uh, we're taping this show at the gorgeous RV park here at North Star Mohican Casino and Resort. And don't forget, on September 16th, uh, reserve your site or just show up or get a hotel room at the gorgeous yes. resort. Uh, we got hand-picked here, the Bluegrass Band. We're going to have a hoot of a time. And, and you folks over in, in, in Wisconsin, on, on, the, on, on September 10th at 8 a.m., you can meet at the Manitowoc Piggly Wiggly store, walk That's the two right. rivers for, for, for Habitat for Humanity. Yeah, but it's for a good cause, too. I'm really glad they did this. Now, is this a hot dog or is this a hot dog there, buddy? That is a Midwest hot dog. That's right. There again, you see, this is Midwest Grilling, Midwest hot dog. This is what it's about. It's the size of things. Man, a big oh man, difference. you folks in Texas, you ain't got nothing until <laughs> you lived in the Midwest. Like, and you know when you got a hot dog that big? Oh, 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 there. Oh, 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 pull that, watch my oh, best oh, view. Oh, 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 oh. You need a pickle. That's right. That's and right. Meryl and I have been in enough pickles, and you put that pickle right on top of that hot dog, and you serve it with a big old-fashioned Wisconsin olive. That's true. Which what's is a head of cabbage. With a glass of wine. Oh, hey, I'll tell you what. This is, this, is, this is the cat's meow right here. Uh, uh, with that nice sweet kraut that we did, that crisp kraut, may I suggest to you, Dorp, each and every time, Dorp Peninsula Winery. Uh, but we have a little blackberry wine that Meryl and I are going to sip on as we have some of our great kraut. And the next time that you get up into Door County, you can visit Dorp Peninsula Winery, enjoy some of their great eats, and, and have a great time. Or your local realtors ask, always ask for Dorp Peninsula Winery. Good we had thanks. a good time here today, folks. I'll tell you what, we're going to be back with more of Mad Dog and Meryl's Midwest Grilling next time. All right. Yeah. You're eating again? Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grillin' is a production of Lashbro Visual Communications.